What's going on, man? This is your boy, Super Mario Man, and you are in the auditorium with your boy. <laughs> nah, man, we are in the auditorium uh, at my place of employment, and um, we're just doing some testing right now, some new equipment, uh, just to putting it through the spaces to see, you know, saying how the sound quality is, and also uh, if the cameras are working um, and everything like that. Uh, may need to call the programmers out here to come and you know saying tighten up a little things with the processing um but anyway you know saying we are here um we're going to be doing a reaction video uh to a newly released interface that i'm really looking to replace my current interface that i have at my studio um and that current interface that i have is the focus right 18 out 20 really good interface served this purpose made my money back on it um but what what's making me want to replace that interface is number one the age the conversion and the round trip latency uh all of those things are coming of age and we need to keep up you know what i'm saying with um and i stay busy doing audio work so i need something that you know what i'm saying that's not going to stop my workflow or slow it down or whatnot um the reason why i'm doing this reaction video is to help someone out there to understand how to make the right decisions when it comes to in and outs connectivity um you know saying does it work with my outboard gear or any other gear that i use outside of the daw um you know saying uh usb peripherals can i take it out and you know saying put it in a rack mounted travel case um does it work with an ipad or 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 my phone <laughs> you know what i'm saying does it work with my mac computer does it work with my windows computer um you know saying all of these different um decisions that you have to make when it comes to spending that dollar you know what I'm saying because you got to maximize your dollar here today uh times or whatnot so if you're going to go and spend eight nine hundred uh excuse me eight nine one thousand dollars on a uh, interface you have to maximize that purchase you understand and i'm gonna show you guys how i shop for an interface and hopefully it'll help you um make the right decisions on your next purchase or your next investment let's use that word investment into your time and into your studio and into your business and stuff like that so without further ado man let's go ahead and check out this reaction video from sweetwater um by way of mo2 uh checking out the mo2 828 now i do not work for sweetwater i do not work for mo2 i'm here to help you guys out i ain't getting paid for any folk you know what I mean? we're doing the honest uh decision making process in order to make the right decision on an investment let's check it out man All right, man, here we are in YouTube. Uh, we're on the Sweetwater YouTube page, checking out Mitch Gallagher and his overview. Again, I don't work for Sweetwater. I don't work for Motu. <laughs> what not, man? What we're doing is trying to see how you can make that right conscious decisions uh, on, you know, saying your piece of investment when it comes to, you know, shopping for an inter interface or whatnot and how you can maximize that as well. So I'm going to do this reaction video. Check out Motu and Mitch Gallagher's overview and see what we can make the right decisions. Lego. Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Today we're checking out the latest audio interface from Motu. Let's get started. Today we're looking at the brand new 828. Now you might say the 828's been around for Looks quite a very, while. Looks very, very streamlined professional. But this is, I guess you could say, the fifth generation or the fifth iteration of the 828, and it's a completely new redesign. It's been totally modernized. We're going to dive in and take a deeper look. But before we do that, be sure to like, comment on this video, like and subscribe to me, man. Engineer. Me too. Now let's take a look at the 828. <laughs> So this new version of the 828 really brings the 828 into 2024. We've got a completely new design. You can see the faceplate is very streamlined. Mm. The controls, they just feel really luxurious. It's a solid all steel design. It's almost twice as deep as the previous 828s because there's a lot going on inside this box. All right, so let me stop it right there. Uh, one thing I could tell you about Motu and their products is they're made solid. When I bought the M2 um, interface, that little box, it wasn't no plastic on it at all. The only, <laughs> the only plastic I think was the 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 actual XLR inputs. You know what I'm saying? Because that that can't really be metal like talking about. But let me tell you something: solid, the knobs metal. You know what I'm saying? The casing metal. The back plate for the connections is metal and stuff like that so when you getting a motu product it is built 
to the T. You know what I'm saying? It's built in the United States um, and everything, which I don't care where the hell is built at but it's all about the quality and you're going to get a really quality product and so what he's saying about this thing the metals the knobs and everything i can look at it right now and tell you the feel of this the look of it in your studio is going to give it that professional look um and the sound quality i'll let mitch talk about that so let's get back in the video it's ultra versatile and sounds fantastic. And we're gonna take a little closer mm -hmm. look so you can see all the things that the 828 could do for you both in your studio and on stage. The new 828 is class compliant with Mac, PC, and iOS devices, but there are dedicated Motu drivers and they're gonna give you even better performance. All right, let me stop it right there. So drivers and stuff like that. Of course, any interface is going to have drivers. It's the it's the communication between, um, you know, saying the interface and the computer. But more importantly, you know, saying is it going to work with your iPhone or an iPad or whatnot? Is it going to work with that? Um, and anytime you have an interface that can work with a mobile device, um, it, it just helps you get more things done um let's say for instance you are a audio engineer freelance audio engineer and you specialize and you make your money in recording different podcasts a lot of podcasts can't have a on set type of situation you got a lot of podcasters out there that want to do an episode in the mall an episode on the side of a cliff you know what i'm saying they want to go travel and set up in a hotel room or whatnot you know what i'm saying um uh the pivot pro podcast uh with ryan clark you know what I'm saying most of their podcasts is not in the same set they travel different cities in different hotel lobbies or wherever they be at even at someone house if they can't really move around and stuff like that um you want an interface that can that is class a compliant he's about to say that class a compliant means it can work with a ipad or a mobile device and sometimes a galaxy phone or um, for you all you android people out there or whatnot but the connectivity when it comes to that windows mac ios it matters it really really does matter um if you want to make more money and have yourself um you know saying be more expendable um for as you know saying ooh. Hey, hey, such and such, can I utilize you to record this and this at this location? You know what I'm saying? If you answer no, you 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 losing money, you leaving money on the table. You understand what I'm saying? So you have to understand all of these connectivities and is it gonna be right for your workflow? If you just a sit in the studio type of person, you know what I'm saying, think about that too. Then you may need to look at something that's just only Windows and Mac and not class A compliant. So that's one thing to think about right there. Put that in your notebook. All right, let's go. It connects to your computer using USB 3 up to 5 gigabits per second, or it's also backward compatible with USB 3 is the new uh, classification for USB. You know what I'm saying? A lot of things, if you're looking at an interface that has USB 1, USB 2, you may want to kind of shy away from that. Um, Focusrite has the, cla the claret interface which i would love to upgrade because those claret preamps are nice but what's drawing me back is that if i buy another computer and let's say it's having problems you know what I'm saying doing backwards compatibility with a usb 2.0 uh connection that's that's what i'm gonna be dealing with and i'm gonna be highly pissed if my you know what I'm saying 900 hundred dollar interface is having problems connecting because the the motherboard of my pc takes all 3.0 or higher you understand what i'm saying so if you're shopping for an interface please look for an interface that is supporting or starting to support 3.0 um, peripheral connection um, with computers and stuff like that all right usb 2.0 so it's super fast and that helps with the latency of this device it actually it comes is. in as low as two milliseconds at 96 kilohertz and that's as good as any of the fastest audio interfaces that so you know when you're recording and you gotta oh man let me put it down 128 uh buffer <laughs> or 96 buffer 64 buffer nah bro you can keep that bad boy at 512 if you record let say like you said at 96,000 sample rate and your buffer size is at 512 your round trip latency he ain't lying because i had two interfaces your round trip latency is going to be three milliseconds or less you ain't got to move nothing so you can record with plugins and record with your favorite preamp plugin on the actual channel and do all of that uh, all of that exploration of ex uh, recording with a small window of round trip latency 
um, with my interface, the focus right 18 out of 20, the round trip latency at 512, even at 96,000 uh, sample rate is at about 24 milliseconds. Think about that. Okay. 96,000 sample rate. That's your recording sample rate. 512 uh, buffer size, sample buffer size. 24 point something milliseconds. With this interface, same specs, 512, 96,000 sample rate, three point milliseconds or less. That should, if you, look, if you're into audio, that should be like, that's what's up. You feel me? So that's really, really good, man. Let's go ahead. That are on the market. Basically, it's like no latency at all. Now, part of that is because we have so much onboard DSP inside the 828 itself. We're going to take a look at the QMix software a little bit later, but that DSP provides 24 channels of mixing with up to eight stereo buses. It also provides onboard effects. We've got reverb, we've got four band EQ on the nice. inputs, the outputs, we've got gating, we've got compression. You get all of A lot of processing right inside the 828 without taking any latency hit at all and without putting any pressure on your computer at all. So you know what that means? Uh, so you might be asking the question, uh, DSP processing. DSP processing it allows you to get the signal right before you even before it even records, or should I say, uh, when you stop stop recording, you you're, you will have a processed signal. So let's let me give you a scenario on that DSP processing. Let's say for instance you're recording a percussionist. Um, and you got all of this stuff going on in your DAW, but you notice that you're using a lot of plugins and your your CPU is like, hold on, wait a second. <laughs> we, we got a lot going on. Well, DSP processing will allow you to EQ, compress and do all the other stuff he was mentioning um, before, you know, saying you even think about a, a, a plug in and applying all of that on there. So it takes away from actually having to use plugins and you can get the sound right before you even start recording. That's what DSP processing is. Or in other terms, it's an internal mixer for the interface. So, you know, saying or should I say it's an internal digital mixer for the interface. So you can get your sound sounding right before it even start recording onto your hard drive. And that's the benefit of having these type of interfaces, especially with DSP processing, which is really, really good, man. So that's another thing you want to put in your notebook right there. A benefit of all that DSP and the QMix 5 software that runs in your computer is that you can actually remote control the 828 using Wi-Fi with an iOS device or with another computer that's on the same Wi-Fi network. Nice, it has network nice, management nice. built in. You can also password protect it if you like. So being able to access everything in the 828 remotely is a very cool feature. But let's get back to the hardware. We've got a total of 60 audio connections here, 28 inputs and 32 outputs, and we'll go through those in just a second. But all that is driven by the most cutting edge state of the art converters that Motu could find, and that's the ESS Sabre 32 Ultra converters. Ooh! Those converters are nice. They're, they're brand new. Um, I, I, I don't want to say brand new, um, but when I found out about them in 2020, um, these, these, I haven't seen these converter this name the saber whatever he said the saber net or something like that i haven't seen that name floating around um when i was always shopping and looking and window shopping for interfaces or whatnot and i'm gonna tell you they that that the same conversions or uh, converters that he's talking about um in this particular interface was in the m are in the m series they're nice they're they're really good man um, the, whew, they give you some dynamic range like it's cool it's it's awesome um and stuff like that like this mic that i'm talking on i used to use this on the m2 uh interface and um i can hear the breakup as i'm talking right now because i'm on a uh cheek personas inter uh interface right now but let me tell you something <laughs> they're nice they're really really nice man worth the check out man for real for real and that provides up to 125 dB of dynamic range on the DAX or on the outputs. Let's Tell go through me. the I.O. Beginning on the front panel, we have two mic, line, and instrument preamp inputs. Those feed standard, into channels standard. 1 and 2. Now, these are completely redesigned preamps. They offer up to 74 dB of gain, so they're going to work great with mm. those 
high demand dynamic microphones that we like to use for podcasts and things, things like the SM7 that mm-hmm. require quite a bit of preamp juice to drive. Did you catch that? He said these preamps on the front face gives you 74 dB worth of gain um, or whatnot. So like this mic I'm talking on, I have to crank this up. Uh, and currently what I'm on, currently I'm at 43 dB on the preamp gain. You see what I'm saying? Uh, if I need more juice and just really need to drive this through whatever I need to, um, or whatnot, this particular interface, I still got 30, 30 more gain to do. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm at 43, I'm halfway of what this, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the interface I'm on, it stops at 60. So just imagine that other interface, well, this one, the Moto 82, uh, 828, is at 74. You can, I mean, shit. I mean, you can, Man, you can get one of those Timu mics, and you know what I'm saying the one they use for uh, for TikTok, the one that, that about the size of your dog on Pinky, and you could drive that with that interface and make it sound good, probably. <laughs> what not, man? So um, that's that's another thing you want to shop for, though. All jokes aside, you want to make sure that your preamp gain is adequate you know what i'm saying if you're getting anything or if you're considering to buy an interface and the preamp gain is 55 or below let me take that back if you're getting a preamp um uh gain that's 60 or below i wouldn't even waste my money with that because these type of products are stepping the bar up for all these other companies to say, hey, we need better preamps in our products. You see what I'm saying? Uh, to drive better microphones or low signal sources. You know what I'm saying? Because if you got a low signal source, you got to crank it up, right? You can't go nowhere once you max it out at 55. You know what I'm saying? And once you start getting up there to the max, you know what I'm saying? That sound starts to break up. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And it starts to distort. And you don't have nowhere else to go. And then you're having to digitally crank up the gain. And that's just really, um, it just really doesn't do anything characteristically or whatnot. So 74 dB a gain is pretty awesome, man. So put that in your notebook right there. With them. Of course, we have polarity invert. We've got a 20 dB pad. We've got 48 volt phantom power. And of course, the specs for the preamp are simply outstanding. We've got minus 129 dB EIN or equivalent input noise, mm. 114 dB THD plus noise. We also got up to 118 dB of dynamic range on those preamps themselves. Very good specs. It's now, the other nice specs. thing about those first two inputs is that on the back panel, we have hardware inserts that come after the preamp. Now, these are balanced TRS connections, so you have both balanced input. Oh, let's, let's rewind that back for a second. Uh, right about there. There we go. All right, so let me get my annotation going on right here. This is what he's talking about right here, and I, hopefully I can... This right here. So what I drew in a box is these connections are connected or they're taking the signal from the preamp. So what this is allowing and what he's trying to explain is when you basically plug in, let's say, two hand, uh, two handheld dynamic microphones on the front, you know, saying XLR, uh, XLR, excuse me, XLR connections, you know, one and two on the front face of this um, of this interface, you could take that signal and route that to outboard gear and bring it back in on the same um on the same connection one and two so basically you're sending um these little points right here you're going to send that audio out to let's say two dbx compressors and then you run the outputs of those dbx compressors back onto the returns here and you don't necessarily have to come out of these two connections and then come into you know saying one of these connections right here you see what i'm saying because that's going to take up your line in and your line outs so that kind of frees up four or actually two connections of your lines in and your lines out or whatnot that is that is pretty awesome right there man so again you know saying uh on the ones and twos you get sends outs right here come back in on the returns and then boom there you go it's part of the processing and you don't necessarily again have to use your line in that could be free you know what i'm saying uh same thing with your line out that could be free so that is very very awesome right there man that right there your in and out connectivity you might want to write this in your notebook in and out connectivity has to make sense this right here alone and i'm starting to see a lot of companies include this right here send and return um 
points for you know saying the uh the combo jacks or whatnot this is very important even though the front side yeah the front side is combo jacks this is very important because it frees up your ins and your outs your dedicated ins and outs for your interface so put that in your notebook fellas and boys and girls and women out there and everything like that man let's get back to the video <laughs> TRS connection, so you have both balanced input and output for connecting to professional studio gear. And an added bonus is since that insert point comes after the preamp input, you can actually use those back panel insert points as additional line inputs, and they completely bypass the preamp when you do that. There Next it up is. on the front panel, we have two independent headphone outputs. You can see each one has its own volume control knob there, but you can also assign a completely independent Q mix to each of those headphone outputs. Nice. That rounds out our I.O. on the front panel. Of course, we nice. have controls as well. We've got our preamp controls here. We've got our control room controls here. You can actually connect two sets of monitors, an A-B switch between those. We also have front panel control over monitor mute and monitor summing to mono. Mm. And there's a front panel talkback switch as well. Mm. Next to those front panel controls. What I like about the front panel of this is it has a mono button on it. Um, I love that. Um, that's that's awesome. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm one of those engineers that check my mixes in mono um, and everything like that just to make sure everything is... You know saying moving and you know levels are where they had and uh, phase correction and everything and whatnot but um i hate you know saying doing the hitting the mono button in in pro uh excuse me in um in studio one you know what I'm saying i just hate it <laughs> uh, sometimes i forget about it and i'm looking I'm just looking around when you're monitoring you're just kind of looking around when you're listening missing listening to your mix and you forget that mono button is on but they have a button that lights up blue and indicates you know saying hey i'm on so i really like that feature right there uh i like the ab feature um and stuff like that and the independent control and the assignable q mixes to the headphones that's really what's up man uh i know he hasn't gotten to it but this led front face in uh this led this display right here that's bananas bro like you can accurately see where your metering is at. The segment of LEDs on the focus right and the personas and other interfaces is cool, but that's old technology. Motu stepping up the game and giving you some new technology and giving you some accurate levels. Um, because when you're when you deal with preamp levels, you know what I'm saying, it's very, very important not to be too hot or not to be too cold. But you can't really tell when you got a segmented led meter you know what I'm saying where it's negative 12 negative 6 negative 3 then zero you know what I'm saying you don't know where the fuck you at in between you see what i'm saying so this this meter he's about to get to um is that's oh that's beautiful right there man and you get to see all of your ins and outs and what's going on in the box that's what i like right there man put that in your notebook man let's go ahead and play controls is this beautiful 3.9 inch tft display it's a 24 bit display total full color rgb it really looks gorgeous and it tells you everything that's happening you can mm -hmm. see that we can adjust the headphone controls we can adjust the preamp you can see that red out on the front panel as well we've got input metering output metering i'm playing back a session now so we're seeing that oh okay. we can see monitor level oh, control nice. as well as our sample rate clocking midi status and so on now we Man. can adjust the parameters from the front panel using this control we scroll through and then you can select whatever parameter you want to adjust and work with it from there. So everything can be done right from the front panel. It's God, very doggone it. That beautiful display makes it so nice to work with the A28. Woo. The back panel, we begin with those two hardware inserts we talked about earlier. And next to this, we have eight TRS balanced line level inputs. They're great for keyboards, for external processing gear, and so on. Mm -hmm. You can actually boost the gain or level of those line inputs in 1 dB increments. We have hmm. stereo XLR outs. Those are our main outputs that would feed our monitors. So your main outs. I like that they put XLR uh, connections on your main out. This is the reason why when you're using line level out, um, to me, in my opinion and in my experience, when you use line level out, um, you can get, you can buy the wrong cables. So let's say, for instance, you buy unbalanced trs left unbalanced trs right what's going to happen is you're going to introduce more noise into your speakers so if you got this iphone close to that interface or close to your speakers or whatever or shoot a wi-fi signal security camera close by you have your video servers or whatever you know what I'm saying whatever you got in your room uh, those 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 radio frequencies those rf signals 
can bleed into your signal and into your monitoring and you get out the you know what I'm saying going on in your in your studio monitors and that's not what's up but you have a a balanced connection which is XLR so um you get more of a connection point with this right here and um it's going to shield your signal going to your monitors um uh, a whole lot better than you know saying uh, unbalanced or balanced line connection right here so i love the fact that they have put xlr uh connections for your main outs for your speakers man um again they're stepping the bar up because a lot of interfaces do not have this mixers um are very commonly for this but not interfaces because see how much of the back plate is taken up you know what I'm saying so if i was designing this and i needed to cut cost you know what I'm saying i'm gonna put the main out and just have it as a trs connection but you see you have to basically solder and make room on the circuit board for this xlr so it's taking up a lot of room but they say hell we ain't worried about it shoot we got a high quality product it, it, you got to think like that you feel me so you know what I'm saying they it's it's not about cutting corners it's about giving quality to the signal you know what i'm saying the integrity of the signal so put that in your notebook right there man if if an interface is not you know what i'm saying putting that out there then shoot man you need to think about that those unbalanced connections or even balanced trs connections can cause some signal bleed from rf signals put that in your notebook and again, we have control over those from the front panel. We're going to talk more about monitor control in just a minute. Next to those, we have eight TRS balanced line level outputs. Nice. And again, we can trim the level of those in one dB increments. But an even nicer feature is they actually are DC coupled. And this means that we can use them for control voltage with synthesizers. Mm -hmm. Very cool to be able to control that control voltage from within your DAW just using your audio interface. We also have eight at IO on the back panel. We have two banks there providing up to 16 channels of optical input and output. The first bank can be switched to Toslink to give you stereo spitif optical mm. input and output. A nice feature with those optical inputs and outputs is we can actually use the 828 as an input and output expander with another interface or with a digital mixer, for example, using those ADAT connections. Mm. It's very easy to access that. We can either do it from the front panel or we can do it in the QMix 5 software. You simply turn on expander mode and it becomes an input and output expander that works great with your other gear. Round oh, okay. So right here, um, basically, if you don't understand what he's saying about optical connections and everything like that, um, you can utilize, um, let's say, for instance, you have a, uh, I don't know, a Personas uh, freaking 18.8 or 18.10 interface, um, which is, you know, two in, two out, two, two, uh, four in, two out. Uh, two in, four out, you know what I'm saying? But you just don't have a lot of ins and outs. You know what I'm saying? You can have a focus right two out two. You feel me? Um, but, <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is if you have an interface that can accept the optical in, Apollo Twin is a good example or whatnot. It only has two in and two out. The Apollo Twin, or actually, I'm sorry, it has, it has four in and two out. You know what I'm saying? But you need more inputs and it only has the optical in. So the Apollo Twin, it has that optical in so you can have and you can expand to another preamp source and you can expand your inputs so basically what that means is you can run the signal that you have plugged all everything that you have plugged into this particular interface you can run that audio digitally out into the apollo twin as inputs and you will expand from let's say two inputs all the way up to you know saying uh eight or even 16 you know what I'm saying um when in this case eight or whatnot so that is really really cool right there out the back panel we have a coax digital output for spitif we also have midi input and output and we can also set this to be midi through so you don't have to have a computer connection you can plug into that midi input and route through to your other devices the usb port of course connects to your host whether mac pc or ios and then we've got word clock input and output for synchronizing the digital data mm. one thing i skipped over was the foot switch connector now that can be used as a punch in punch out as you'd normally think of with your daw but it can also serve to send keystrokes just like you're typing on a computer keyboard oh that's have new one right there sent when you push the button down that's and another new. sent when you let the button up and you set that up using the qmix 5 software there are so many additional features of course we have loop back for recording the signal back into your computer if you're live streaming or podcasting that's an important feature uh, a lot of interfaces still 
don't have loop back feature and stuff like that. A lot of people, I get a lot of questions. People hit me up, you know, in a in a direct message uh, or email, and they're asking like, "Hey, does the UAD have a loop back feature?" I see it all over Reddit. Does UAD have loop back feature? And unfortunately, it doesn't. So if you go and you spend, let's say, I don't know, I don't know what a UAD Apollo Twin uh, USB interface is going for right now, or the US you uh the uh, what that is the apollo no 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 no. i'm sorry the uad arrow or the uad what it is the single channel uh uad interface this uh i don't know if the spark has it um the big uad two thousand dollar interfaces all of those interfaces that uad make do not have the loopback feature so if you're a person like me that want to do podcasting <clears throat> you want to do youtube you know what I'm saying and do some other type of content creation and you want to have a nice professional setup with an interface it doesn't have loopback feature so this is very very important when you shop for an interface if you're going to do any type of content creation make sure whatever interface that you have has loopback functionality functionality if that's a word <laughs> functionality, uh, functionality, functionality, whatever you know. what I'm saying, make sure it has loopback feature on it or whatnot, because a lot of interfaces still do not have it. Now the Personas, let me speak on the Personas 1824 and the 18 series uh, interfaces. They have, uh, they have loopback feature, and this is one of the things that you gotta look at when you're doing all this research. It has loopback, but they take away inputs one and two so if you have your mic plugged in the one or two you can't you won't be able to hear that mic because it's using the virtual inputs and taking away of the analog one and two inputs I, it's a weird circuitry design and i don't know why would you do that you know what i'm saying and that's a shortcut you feel me in the circuitry design so i don't like companies that make shortcuts when you know what I'm saying you, you could make it happen but you took a shortcut because i don't know what you know what I'm saying so that's a real drawback for me um or whatnot i bought a, a interface um 18 uh, 1810 interface has some good inputs and outputs but when you want to use loopback Instead of plugging your microphone and keeping it on one or keeping your microphone or two, you got to move it to three and four and you can't use one and two. That's the dumbest shit ever. You know what I'm saying? So when you're looking at the loopback feature on any interface that you're interested in, make sure that there's no limitations like you can't use a certain input. OK, so I just wanted to point that out and put that in your notebook, man. You know what I'm saying? Do your research thoroughly and not half assed. And we have a very cool feature if you're doing immersive or surround work. Mm. And that's that the front panel monitor control can actually control multiple outputs. So you can control the level of all your speakers simultaneously using the one front panel control. Oh, when you purchase so... an 828, it comes with Motu's Digital Performer Lite, which is going to get you started right out of the box. And that includes more than 100 different instruments that you can load up for creating your music. It also comes with Ableton Live Lite and more than 6 gigabytes of content, samples, loops, and so Can't on. Can't go wrong now, at this with point, the software. I've the Cumix <laughs> <laughs> software a number of times. Let's take a look at it and what you can do from within that app. All right, so I've got Digital Performer 11 running here, but let's switch over. I hate Digital Performer. Qmix, and this is our software app that allows us to access all the features inside the A28. Hmm. This is our home screen. You can see we've got our microphone level controls here for our preamps, monitors, phones, etc. This is where we can set up our AB monitoring. We can also control that from the front panel. We've got our talk back. You can choose a source for that. Oh, I like and also that. direct input monitoring. And this allows us to monitor through the A28 with virtually no latency. I like how you you don't have to jump through hoops to try to find everything when it comes to connectivity, especially on the talk back. So it's not just a little microphone that they have on the front face of the interface. Let's say you have your microphone plugged in. I don't know. You're running a mic through an outboard preamp and you have that preamp plugged in the out, uh, line in three. You could choose that um, by way of the destination box right here. That's that's awesome. You know what I'm saying? Like it's giving you flexibility when it comes to ins and outs and input monitoring as well. Uh, I like what you can do with that as well, man. So it's it's really st straightforward, not hard at all. Let's continue. We've got device settings here, sample rate, and so on. 
We've got our input settings for those eight additional line level inputs, as well as our optical inputs. And this is where we set up the foot switch as well. Mm. We have a down keystroke and an up keystroke. Oh. Similar, we can configure our outputs. We've got our main outs, we've got our headphone outputs, and we've got our line level outputs too. And those feed from our different mixes, which we'll take a look at in just one second. Mm. Here's where we assign our loop back, what's going on spit if, our optical output banks, and so on. And so if you're looking at this and be like, well, I got to control all my outputs, you know, saying from a software, he mentioned earlier in the video that you can control these outputs with the menu button and that big, uh, it, there's a knob on there where you can control um, pretty much everything you're seeing in the software. So um, it gives you two different ways you can control your outputs. So um, it's, so what they did in their design with this interface is not have dedicated knobs for each uh line in or output or whatnot um or whatever the case may be um you know what i'm saying it's kind of like we have a multi-faced knob that could control pretty much everything or whatnot uh, and it comes back on having to have pointer meters or a pin to your meter um which is nothing but a lot not fancy word for a knob um so most interfaces you know they have the eight knobs in the front well that kind of cuts back on that cost and you can put that design circuitry and what you can do with the interface to other areas so um i like that you can you have a the software that's really easy easy to use and it takes away from you know the knobs because sometimes when you got your studio set up and everything like that you can accidentally move the preamp knobs and everything like that so um, it's really cool, you know what I'm saying, to really kind of like refine a lot of different things when it comes to your in and out trims. Now these next selections here along the left side of the window are different mixes that we can assign to the various outputs. So this is our main mix and we can configure that for whatever monitoring situation we want to hear. Mm. And take a look up here at the top. If we click, we can open up our four band EQ for that input. We can also nice. jump to the gate and the compressor, we've got mute, we've got level, solo, and so on. So it really is a comprehensive mixer right here inside the QMix 5 software. But again, that's running on the DSP that's inside the 828 hardware. It's not running in your computer. And we can set up similar independent mixes for headphones one, headphones two. We've got line mixes for those pairs of line level outputs. And we also have the onboard reverb that we can access. Mm. Now notice that over here on our outputs, if we go back to say the 7-8 mix, we also have EQ for that as well. If you're working in a network, you can do discovery here, and then we can log out of our device here. So the QMix 5 software makes it very easy to access all of the features that you need to control your 828. And again, you can do that remotely over Wi-Fi using a computer or an iOS device running the QMix 5 app. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the new Motu 828. It's the fifth iteration of the 828 and by far the best they've ever made. The front panel just feels great with those controls and it performs even better than it feels and it looks. The audio performance is stellar and it offers so much flexibility. I mean, I don't know what you couldn't do with this interface, <laughs> whether you're using it as an expander, whether you're using it as a standalone mixer being mm. controlled by the QMix 5 software, or whether you're using it as an audio interface with your DAW, whether you're using it for control voltage to control analog synthesizers. There are so many different That's crazy. options with this interface. And again, keep in mind that it's a completely new design. Those preamps are fantastic. We have tons of gain, all those features. This really is a solid winner for Motu. Be sure to check it out. So, um, yeah, that's that's basically it right there, man. So, um, yeah, um, go ahead and put my face in the middle, man. So, yeah, that's basically it with the reaction video on the Motu 828 uh, interface. Um, let's go ahead and check out their uh, website real quick, and uh, we'll go ahead and get up out of here, man. Um, you can tell I've been doing some previous research <laughs> um, or whatnot, but we're going to check this out. Uh, like I said, the focus right, you know, uh, those preamps, man, I think that... 18 out 20 uh interface been out for a minute man i want to say over five years um and a lot has changed with interfaces over the last five years and i think that interface may be eight years old i, I don't know uh because when i first got it i think it was out for a little minute um but you're getting some new new some new 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 and stuff like that you can see the interface right here and um it's just it's 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 a it's a beauty of art man um what really sells me is this doggone led meter man it is awesome bro to see what's going on with your ins and outs is awesome again we got the talk back button the mono button here um you know what i'm saying 
minimalistic and you can still control everything with this menu button right here um and not have to pull up the qmix software or whatnot man so here's some more pictures here let's go and check out the gallery all right that's the front that's the back right there uh top view you can see the metal casing on it and everything like that it's pretty dope man uh, really really dope man i bet you this thing is heavy as hell too man yes sir yes sir so yeah man um and it you know when you go to the website um it's it's basically gonna give you everything that he talked about you know saying the ess um saber 32 uh digital to analog conversion is is just awesome man um you're gonna love that right there man um this is gonna give you the idea of the connectivity right here you can have all of this plugged in you remember when he said something about the sins and returns on one and two you can see that everything is running out and coming back in that is just crazy so all the connectivity you could do simultaneously not no limitations because a lot of these inter interfaces have limitations you can use the output but you can't use this input and you know the the routing matrix is you know there's a start and a stop or a gate or a close well, something's got to open and the other one got to close everything can be ran in and out simultaneously which is really really awesome man um not to mention the round trip latency um <laughs> at around about you know what I'm saying um uh, that's crazy, bro. This ultra low I'm telling you, man. Personas was the ones that really kind of like started doing the low latency performance on some of their products and software. Uh, but a lot of people caught on and you know what I'm saying ran with it. And personas now ain't, ain't really doing it. Unless you had that quantum interface um and a firewire connection as far as a Mac computer, you know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna really get too much of that right there, man. Um again, we just going through it. That's the Q mix. Uh, software that you can operate on your phone or uh, iPad and you don't necessarily have to touch the uh, the interface at all. Uh, this is real good when you're doing live gigs. Uh, so if you do, uh, let's say, remote podcasting or, you know, small concerts and you're utilizing this interface, this is work will work really, really good. Um, let's see here. Uh, the loopback function that they were talking about uh, for live streaming uh, is really, really good. And I can't I can't stress enough about loopback function and live streaming. A lot of people want to do live streaming, but you're having to buy, you know, saying two, three, four different devices just to do a live stream and you have all this connectivity. And then when a person like me show up, you know, saying I got one interface and we could do what's happening, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying and um, and I still have this interface right here. Um, this is my Personas Revelator interface, and I utilize this because the ease of loopback func uh, functionality. Um, I, I still have it. Um, it's not great, and you can hear my voice on it. Um, it's a cheap box, but the loopback functionality allows me to do content creation at anywhere I set up at. I could be in Starbucks, and I could do a damn video. You know what I'm saying? So all I need is a camera, a webcam, and I can be in Starbucks doing a video and I have this and some power. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So um, loopback is very, very important for video creation these days, man. So if your interface does not have that, you may want to rethink another option. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, everything that's being made today is really, really good. I mean, everything is really, really good. It's not like it was pre-COVID. Everything after COVID, the products are really starting to starting to hold their weight, man. For real, for real. So, um, yeah, that's the Motu um, 828 showing you different configurations. Um, this is probably one of your basic config configurations right here. Uh, and this next diagram would be more complex. Uh, let me see if I can move my, my uh, hit shot there. So, you can see here, you can connect all kind of different things here uh let's go here boom you know what i'm saying pc midi controller modules stage monitors midi modules outboard processing and everything like that man you could do so 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 much man so 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 much and the bundle software and everything like that man um so yeah man that's your interface is going to be the brains of your operation um it's going to be your um it's going to be your 
your brains. You know what I'm saying? Um, without the interface, you don't record music. Without the interface, you don't make beats. Without the interface, you don't engineer. Without the interface, you don't get that podcast done. Without the interface, you don't do that live show. You need some type of interface to get the analog to the computer. You know what I'm saying? So the interface is very, very important. Um, just as important as your preamps. So if you can have very good preamps, in a good interface with good connections and everything like that, your life is going to be easy and you're not going to be throwing away $500 here, $300 there, $200 here, uh, $800 there, whatnot. Maximize your money and stuff like that. Just because it has the big name, the big three name, the big four name or whatnot, it doesn't matter. It's all about what you need for your purposes and stuff like that um so yes uad does make a awesome interface but the lack of loopback functionality kills it and you know, stuff like that the 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 dsp power is awesome and you know, stuff like that but you know what I'm saying they don't make a lot of usb peripheral interfaces they got one usb peripheral interface actually two and that is the arrow if i'm if i think it's the arrow uh it may be some other little situation but it's a single uh single input interface and you have the uad apollo twin now the other one they have i think it's the uad6 or you know saying the, the it's a little bit bigger than the twin that's only firewire windows computers only have usb3 <laughs> that's the fastest peripheral that they have so it's kind of like you have to have a mac in order to use any, anything else expensive with uad so where you gonna go you know what i'm saying now you got to go back down to something like a focus right 18 i 20 or a personas um 1824 which is you know what I'm saying eight channel input um interface as well but those are on that budget level but you want something in between so now you have to look at other different options so it's like you know what I'm saying in your head you i want that uad dog i want that uad but guess what you have to now go get you a mac computer just so you can get that uad sound or you're just gonna settle with the apollo twin you see what i'm saying so um this is why i think the at weight is the best of both worlds now they do make um the the let me see here uh let me see if i can get to it real quick they do make the um the doggone uh motu ultralight um yeah it's the motu ultralight mark 5 and that particular interface is really really cool um it's not rack mounted um it's portable it's about the, almost the same size as uh, the, this uh revelator um that i showed you here um but the only drawback is the back of it is all quarter inch um and i think they kind of they tried to do that to make it more compact and you can see it right here the ultralight mark five right here let's move my camera over here um so this is more desktop you know what I'm saying if you're in an apartment building you ain't got that much going on but you still need a lot of ins and outs because you got a lot of sense then this will work for you um or whatnot and it has some of the same features as the a28 um uh, interface or whatnot so uh this is another option I was looking into and I didn't pull the trigger but for some reason something told me they're gonna come out with a fire rack mounted version that's going to be on the same level as the m series interfaces of mo2 or whatnot so um you can see right here everything is quarter inch you got some optical in and out you got the USB C. uh you got the spit of but look at your ins and outs your main outs and stuff like that so it's a different world it's on the same playing level with the 828 but look how small it is so th that, that are some decisions too do you need a rack mounted interface if you like the 828 for what it's going for and what it's doing, then I highly recommend looking into the Ultralight Mark V if you don't like the rack mounted situation. Okay, so if you need something more tabletop because you don't have rack mounted gear, this will be good for you right here and stuff like that, man. So I hope this video serves you well, man. This has been your boy Super Mario, man. Doing the reaction video to the Moto 828. Check y'all later, man. Peace.